because it will alter the nature of our society. If we go on at this rate, we will not be reproducing the kind of society we are in 20 years. It is a different society. It will be a lower performance society. It must be. You sit down and ask yourself, is it a riddle? No, it isn't. You leave out all your best. Five O's and above, two A's and two O's and above, and graduates. Just leave them out. Year after year, 40, 30, 20 plus percent. The net result must be half skim milk, isn't it? It must be. Because you are not reproducing, whether it is nature or nurture, these are the groups that statistically can be shown to have the highest of the achievers. I've watched these results over the last 27 years. When I started, I believe just like everybody else. I, I was like Dr. Tan Ching Bok. No, he's a good man. I have a lot of time for him because he's honest, he's sincere, and he wants to be fair and equal. I disagree with him because I've had to govern Singapore for 27 years and I know that those assumptions are wrong. We are born unequal. And we've got to make the best of the lot. And whether it's fruit trees, whether it is race horses, whatever it is, this is the way nature works. It's the biochemistry, how it is transmitted. You can't get fruits from Thailand, what you can get today, 20 years ago. You can get big fruits, sweet fruits. What did it? You go to Rangoon, as I went there, the pomelos were like 30 years ago. Not so juicy, not so sweet. They have not been doing their R&D, their biogenetic agriculturalists have not been at work. But in Thailand, you buy any fruit, any pomelo, and it's better. Don't we want to use some common sense and say to ourselves, the more we have of people who can run this economy better, the better it is for everybody. Because one outstanding man who discovers how to do a microchip or whatever can transform our lives and provide jobs and raise standards of living. And when we are throwing away whole sectors of people who should be reproducing themselves and are not, and even those who get married have 1.3 children. In other words, two out of five have one child. Two out of three have one child. No, sorry. Two out of three have one child. We are in for very big trouble. Where does the SAF have his officers from? <laughs> no, this is, 
This is not a matter which will go away by our doing nothing. So I was pleased. Well, not pleased. I was relieved that they had the courage and the political will to take it out into the open. Of course, they are doing it differently, as they should. So they say, well, let's get a PR man, <laughs> 30, 30 second spot on television, how to increase the family size. Well, I say try everything. But try and don't hide it or the problem will get worse and we shall all be in trouble. This is a new Singapore with a younger generation, which you saw an example of it on Saturday. And there's no reason why they cannot achieve under different circumstances. Maybe not 8-10%, I say 3-5%. Richard, who is more optimistic, he says 4 to 6 percent. So is Lee Sian Lung, 4 to 6 percent. Well, I have always been a very cautious man. When I say we try 3 to 5 percent, that means let's aim for 4 and let's make 4. But this has got to be a self reliant, self supporting, and self deciding love. They must face the options, weigh the costs and the benefits. Decide whether the trade-off is worth it. Yes, on little things like uh, Sunday parking, you decide. You learn to take decisions. The other way, somebody sits down, worries about it, finds out how it will work and settles the rules. Some people are bound to be unhappy. <coughs> This way you make up your mind. There will be lots of unhappy people. You face them. Whether it's the RC, CCC, MC. How you want to distribute monthly parking tickets, you do it. In fact, I think the new towns should go to elected representatives. HDB tells me, now, well, standards will go down. I say, small price to pay for educating people on the realities of life. They are better educated. They will know that each decision has its cost. It's that basis that we've made these decisions, or they have, it started before the last elections, the thinking. I said, no, let them invest their CPF funds. Why should the government have to guarantee a minimum when they are aiming for the maximum? but not knowing that if you aim for the maximum, the risks also increase of your losing a large chunk of it. They're better educated. They got a minimum. Let them use what is above the minimum the way they like it. You take the advice. You can uh, go to a tree and pray and see what, <laughs> what message you get. Or you can go to your banker. Management consultants, they will advise you. And if they give you wrong advice, well, scold him roundly and take your custom elsewhere. Just like HUDC, I said, let them run it. And more and more in this phase, the government should privatize not just running corporations, other than what is essential, security, defense, police, basic uh, education. I say even education. 
we had to provide because nobody provided adequately. The Chinese schools depended on the clans to run it. The Indians had their own schools. The government provided just enough to produce clerks and storekeepers. But there is a disadvantage in the government providing because there's total uniformity. No uh, competition, no different forms, no chance to prove that somebody can do it better. I say, why not? Let's take six of the best and tell them here. This, for each pupil, you are paid so much, capitation tax. How much more you want to charge? How much more you will provide? Better teachers, better facilities, whatever it is, up to you. That's the way how the best schools came to be. Whether it is America or Britain or Australia or Canada, that's the way it's run. And had we had such a system, we would have known by 1971-72 that we were underpaying our teachers and getting low-quality graduates, both A-levels, HSC, and university. They were getting better paid elsewhere. All the teachers were joining the foreign ministry. All those who had become principals and had the initiative and the drive joined the foreign ministry or some other ministry. And the schools were going down. We had no mechanism to check. Change is an essential part of life. But the direction of change, the speed of change, the method of change has got to fit our circumstances. And remember, we must know enough of the past to know why the present is what it is. We cannot afford to be purists. The foreign correspondent, the academic, he comes here. One year he thinks he's an expert. He starts on basic principles and dishes out advice. Could our system have worked? Could we have got here to begin with? If we did not have drastic curbs on gangsters whom we can detain for two years at a time. You want to abolish that? Why do you think drug trafficking is down in Singapore? Not only do we get all the drug traffickers, even when we can't prove and can't get the evidence, we also get hold of the addicts and check his urine every day. True, he can go out and get his dose, but it is contained. You cannot run the system any other way. We have two member 